dig and keep digging and keep digging. I don't care if you ain't seen no wind in it, you ain't seen no rain in it, you seen no evidence in it. Go back to Hebrew. Every one of you can quote that what faith is. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. And you can turn with me to back up this word, 2 Kings, 3rd chapter, if you please. 2 Kings, 3rd chapter. So many times we are the children, all the time, but so many times the children of God, especially. Those that ain't a God, they ain't looking for nothing because they don't know they ain't got nothing. But we as children of God, and if you've noticed through the preaching, Pastor Adam's preaching and my preaching, and I was a son, I don't ever know what to teach about Sunday school, is going along with, if you'll think about it, prayer, having faith, exercising your faith, walking in your faith, doing something, do something, do something, do something. And then we say, well, I do, I do do something. But, hmm. Is God even hearing me? Honey, God's hearing you and he's got a perfect plan. But till you get up and put him first in your life, not just when it's suitable for you, not when you've got some other plans that's going to interrupt you being in his house. Oh, I'm going to say this. This is in the Bible. And for sake of not even gathering with his people, but doing what you want to do, except when you got the time to come to church, then don't expect God to run you down Amen. and bubble over you and do those things you think you want so bad. Because I'll tell you the truth, you don't want them that bad. You don't want to serve God that much, and you don't want to, you, you really sure don't want the things in your life to be different. If you do, you want somebody else to push the button. <clears throat> when I say no evidence, listen to me. When the Lord promises you something, his promises are yes and amen. He didn't say, I'll think about it, I might. When you listen to him, but you always have to get close enough to God and pray and know his word to be able to get instructions from him. Because to carry out the instructions, to bring about the miracles. Somebody said, huh? I thought God just floated them things down. Nah. Somebody's prayed. Somebody's interceded. Somebody listened to God. Amen. Oh, you say, what does that have to do with it? Well, I'm going to tell you. The end, it says in the third chapter of Second kings, that the king of the Moabites rebelled against the king of Israel. He mobilized and was coming against him. He also sent his messenger to Jeho Jehoshaphat, king of Judah. He said, the king of the Moabites have rebelled against me. Will you go with me to fight against the Moabites? I will go with you, he replied. Je uh, Jehoshaphat's getting him some help. No man stands alone. Amen. No mankind stands alone. Amen. Pastor Gene don't stand alone. Amen. The Lord girdles her, but if y'all don't help and do something, I'm into it. Amen. Pastor Adam, same way. You do it if somebody don't help you. You may think you can stand alone. You may think you've got so much of the Spirit of God that you can stand alone. You can't. It takes one another and the love of one another and somebody that will pray. You know, you, you might not like what I'm about to say, but I won't ask some people to pray for me. Well, you look funny. Well, because I know they ain't going to put nothing in it. They really ain't. And they can't even pray their own self for their own self. That's true. But I won't ask to ever, I ask to help me pray. I won't know that they'll get down on and help me pray. Mm-hmm, and touch God. But here he's kept trying to gather him some help. And the key said, I'll go with you. I am you as you are, my people as your people, my horses as your horses. By a route, what shall, route shall we attack them? 
Through the desert of Eden, he answered. So the king of Israel set out with the king of Judah and the king of Eden. And after a roundabout march of seven days, the army had no more water for themselves nor the animals for the animals. Already hell's already hitting. They is coming up against hell. They ain't got no water for their self. They in the desert. They got no water for their animals. What? Explained the king of Israel, has the Lord called us three kings together only to hand us over to the most? But Jehoshaphat asked, smart Jehoshaphat, is there no prophet of the Lord here that way we may inquire of the Lord through him? You know, back then there was prophets God spoke to. God can speak to anybody today. Amen. Anybody that will seek his face. Amen. Now, some people that get on Facebook or whatever computers running around telling you God says blah, blah, blah about you. Nah, they got it from one of your friends you done on something and, and that's how they got that. And when they're running all over the church they've heard gossip so they added more to it and time gets to the next and God said, no, nah, God didn't say. No, nah, God didn't say that. But when you spend time with God and it is important to direct your life, and it is important to God to direct your life in the Spirit. And to help other people, God will speak. Sometimes he'll even tell you, now don't repeat this to a person. Hey, so don't even tell this person. This is, I'm telling you this because he knows you're trustworthy, and you'll pray this through for him, and you won't tell other people. God will tell you deep, dark mysteries you do not know. And lead you in places you thought you'd never go. Amen. Good and bad. Amen? Amen? But they didn't have any water. They didn't have anything. And Jehoshaphat says, ain't there a prophet or man of God that we can ask about? Inquire of him through the, uh, from the Lord? And the officer of the king of Israel answered, Elisha, they said. He's the one that used to pour water over Elijah's hands. In other words, he was a great prophet of God. Jehoshaphat said, The word of the Lord is with him. Can you say this morning, The word of the Lord is with me. His word girls me up in my darkest hour. It strengthens me in my weakest times. It helps me through my suffering pain. It hurt, helps me when others are rude and crude and mm, unbelievable to me. It helps me at all times of my life in every situation. Because if the word is with you, it's in you. And it will help you like that. And Jehoshaphat says, and the, Lord, or the word of the Lord is with him. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat and the king of Eden went down to him. Elisha said to the king of Israel, What do you have to do with each other? Go to your prophets of your fathers and prophets of yours, your mothers. In other words, Elisha's not thinking very much of their, their leaders. Amen. No, the king of Israel answered, because it was the Lord who called us three kings together to hand us over to the Moabites. He said, the, you know, the king of Israel has, you know, he's called us together because the Lord wants us three kings to fight. Now, God's got a plan. And the plan for you, everybody want to know the plan for yourself today? I'm about to tell you. Every one of them. The plan for y'all are is to learn how to fight. Woo! Not fight one another. Not fight what you see in the natural eyes. Fight in the spirit realm. Learn how to fight in the spirit realm. Where you can tear every stronghold he set down, everything sets itself up against you and everybody else, every dark place. He said, you can shake it, rally it, and roll it. And you can destroy it. He said, I give you power to destroy it. Now that's powerful. And we should not be running from troubles and running from the church, blaming the church, blaming the people in the church. When we got problems in our lives, and yes, they got, honey, they may not tell you, but they got problems in theirs. And they all, we all act nutty when it gets bad enough. 
with our heads, but we got to pray through and not act like that and stand. Yes. And keep on standing when there ain't no evidence it's going to get any better because it is going to get better because God said that. And I'm going to tell you something else. You probably don't believe this. Most people, they live for the sweet by and by or someday. But people... I've said for years, the Lord's getting ready to come. Well, I've changed that hell lately. And I'll say, Lord, I believe you are already on the way. And you say, why do you say that, Pastor Jesus? Because the Bible of what he said in the end of time that would happen, is happening all over. It's actually happening in the earth from all the way down. But I'm not preaching on that. You, you better get ready. That's what our job is, to be ready, stay ready, packed up, ready to go. That little sister, uh, 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 Mama to me, Mama Williams, I used to call her uh, Mama Williams. She'd call me up, and I was a young woman. That's way when I first come to Montgomery. And she'd call me every morning like clockwork. And I'd be running babies and doing everything I did. And I had a long old cord on my, didn't have nothing but wall phones in and she'd say, hello, honey. You had to talk real loud. She couldn't hear you. I just want to call you this morning. I want you to come in agreement with me. I want you to pray on the phone. I knew what it was going to be before she said anything. I want you to pray I'll be ready if it comes today. Mm. Now, did she miss a church service? She couldn't hardly walk. Hand snarled, couldn't hardly walk. We all have to suffer some and go on. And she come to church when the doors was open. But she said, I want you to pray I'll be ready. She said, I want to be packed up, prayed up, ready to go. Packed up, prayed up, ready to go. Woo! Ready to go. Packed up, prayed up, ready to go. I can feel the Holy Ghost with my arm. We better be prayed up, packed up, and ready to go, honey. Because we ain't going to get no warning. You, got, you get warnings every day. Mm. What does this have to do with this? has a lot to do with it. Because Jehoshaphat said, find this man that hears from God. See what he's got to say. So the king of Israel, because it was the Lord who called them together, Elisha said, as surely as the Lord Almighty lives, whom, whom I, I serve, if I did not have respect for the presence of Jehoshaphat of Judea, he respected Jehoshaphat, I would not look at you or even notice you, but bring the harpist. And when the harpist began to play, the hand of the Lord came up on, mm, up over Elisha, and he said, this is what the Lord says. This is the reason you need to know what the Lord says and when you get in situations. He said, this is what the Lord says. Make this valley full of ditches. For this is what the Lord says. Make the valley full of ditches. Now, strange isn't that? Just strange as it can be. Their horses and their, themselves haven't had any water in over seven days. And they, what a strange request, is what I thought. The Lord says, through the man of God, dig ditches. Make the, this valley full of ditches. For this is what the Lord says. You will neither, neither, See, wind nor rain. There's you no evidence. He said, you ain't going to see no wind blowing up. You ain't going to see no rain. You ain't going to see nothing. But dig them ditches. Amen. Dig them ditches. You know what? I, I noticed it said more than one ditch. Amen. It said ditches. Hmm? Yeah. Sometimes God just wants, you know, he wants to see if you obey. But God can use as little as nothing or as much as he wants to. Amen. 
Just like he has spoke to me, I will always have me a remnant that will serve me. I may just have a remnant, but I'm going to have some ser- that will serve me. And by, for by many or f- by few, I can save, I can deliver, I can do anything. That's what the Lord is saying. So he can take a handful and do mighty things. He can take much more and do mighty things. But God is wanting somebody that will listen and do when there is no evidence. Looks like there's no substance in it. Looks like nothing's about to happen. It's done too late. I've been waiting so many years and God ain't done this yet. I'm ready to check out of him. Oh, you don't think I hear things like that? And I have to, being God's servant, be prayed up and say, oh, honey, I understand. But then I think, I understand this too. You ain't digging and praying like you ought to, and you ain't in my presence like you ought to in the house of God. So I can see where you would get discouraged easier. Hello. Because we need one another. He said, dig those ditches. And I'm telling you, dig damn prayer. Dig and keep digging and keep digging. I don't care if you ain't seen no wind in it. You ain't seen no rain in it. You seen no evidence in it. Go back to Hebrew. Every one of you can quote that. What faith is. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Yoga, but not no evidence and nothing seen. There's the evidence, nothing seen. You're hoping to get, where there ain't no hope in the natural realm. He said, dig those ditches. Oh, hallelujah. Then he gives a little bit more instructions to the man of God. And he said, cause, listen, cause, there ain't going to be no wind and there ain't going to be no rain. Duh. Yet the valley will be filled with water. Amen. Yet the valley will be filled with water. Listen to what I got to say. It don't take no substance. It don't take you being able to see how it can work out. It don't take you thinking it's gone too far. All it takes, glory be to God, is the hand of Almighty God in the midst of it, and God can turn it like that. And the situation some of you are in today, it didn't just start today, last month or the month before that. You have been headed that away for uh, years and years and years. And you brought some of it in there. You did it. And you've never really, you might have said you sir, but you've never went before God and really repent and said, I caused this, show me how to help get this better. And that won't happen overnight. Yahoo, that won't happen overnight. It's just like he said, you ain't going to see no wind and you ain't going to see no rain. But there will be water. Well, in the natural realm, you think if it's going to rain, I know y'all ain't like me, I'm just as dumb as can be. But I'm countryfied. And usually if a cloud comes up, I look, if the wind's blowing very much. Old folks, you say, there's going to be wind in that cloud. It's a rain too. But he says, it ain't going to be no wind. There ain't going to be no rain. But there's going to be some water. Woo! There's going to be some water. There may, may not be no evidence. They may say this is it. Mm. But if God, you hear God, and God says, I'm going to put my hands and change this. It changes. Not in our time. I can say this, but in his time. Mm. He said, it ain't going to rain, the wind ain't going to blow, but the those, they're going to be filled with water, those ditches. And you and your cattle and your other animals will drink. 
He said, why? And then he tells them this. He said, this is an easy thing. An easy thing in the eyes of the Lord. The hardest thing you can think of today. The hardest I'm talking about. That your mind, your thoughts, your heart, anything can go to is an easy thing in God's eyes. And for God to do. Yes. We seem to think higher that mountain we got to climb, harder that thing is to break through, longer it takes to go through it, as that God just don't have that strength. Of, Why hadn't God already done this? And if we don't think like that, we say, I must have missed God. Where did I go wrong, God? Where, where did I miss you, Lord? Forgive me. Show me. And I'll repent from my heart. And I'll never do that again. I'll try to not miss you, Lord. Then the Lord says there's a sin of omission. You just uh, uh, choose to omit it. You just ain't going to even try. Mm -hmm. I ain't going to try. Mm -mm. Well, God's going to judge you for that. Because God wants us to be willing. All God needs, honey, is a willing vessel. You're supposed to be his vessel. All he needs is a willing vessel. Now I want you to remember this the next somebody time somebody comes up to you and says, would you help us out? We need more teachers. Woo, some of them ain't going to like this right here. I'm, I'm going to plug it while I can. We need more teachers. Would you consider... Would you consider and be, would you be a teacher? Hmm. Or would you be a work, nursery worker? I don't do that. I raise my kids. Uh, I'm just not cut out to be in the nursery. And I'm not cut out to teach. You are, you are saying God. I just ain't gonna do this for you. You can flat call it anything else you want to, but that's what it is. You are saying to God, no, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do your work, God. And are you use this excuse? I'm already doing this in the church. Well, when we in need, we have to wear double hats. So maybe you might be doing one thing, but you could still do something else. And you might, you might say, well, you know, I want to be in the services. Don't you think them other people want to be in the services? And but you are when you are doing for the Lord, you're doing service unto Him. If it's back there in the nursery with those little babies where the mama can receive, or the teachers, you're teaching the little kids. Sometimes that's all they get. They don't even get it at home. And I'm ashamed to say this: some people come to church and never teach their children about the Lord. And the only thing I get is what they get when they in Sunday school or children's church. <coughs> And then we have the audacity to say no. But if we want something from God, oh, I ain't getting very many amens, but I know I'm right on it. I, well, if I want anything from God, I want you to move and I want you to move fast on this, God. Lord, I need you to move like yesterday on it. You think God didn't need you a year or two ago to be teaching some children? Children are doing something for him. I did. But y'all are like this. If it don't feel good to your flesh and you don't get recognized enough. Oh, oh I'm on a, you might as well aim me, aim me, me Pastor G. Because I'm going to, you don't get recognized enough, ain't seen enough. It ain't good enough for you. That ain't the way. God ain't going to never move you up like that. You're going to have to get that flesh to do where you don't really care what other people recognize what you do. You know it's between you and the Father. He gets all the praise anyway. You just, you just in his hands doing the best you can. I I'm going to tell you right now. I've been aiming to preach for 30 something years. And the aiming is only through the Spirit of God. Pastor Gene can't do nothing. I realized that when I was a young girl. I can put legs to my prayers, but the Lord's the one that does it. 
and I give him all praise and glory, and I depend on him like that. And you know what? The hardest thing he can tell, I can think of, he can do it. I've been reminding me, my own self of this scripture. That's the easy thing for you to do, Lord. I don't care how it looks. I don't care what to say. That's the easy thing for you to do. And you will do it if somebody will believe you. If somebody will hold on, God. Mm -hmm. Think about this. This is a scary thought right here, people. Think about if all the saints... I'm not saying, because half the people don't even attend church no more. And some of them that attend church is lukewarm. And they, they ain't doing no damage to the devil or no, nothing good for the kingdom of God. But think about the ones that have tried to fan that flame and be on fire for God. Yes. Think about it, what it'd be like if they were taking out this world over all of a sudden. Mm, I wouldn't want to be here. Because I believe in my heart those on fire saints are holding back some of the forces of hell. I know they are. And the more you pray and the more power packed you are, it makes a dead in hell. It wrestles things out of the devil's hands and changes it into the kingdom of God. But now, you can't live and do like you want to do and touch God like that. It don't work like that. You got to live what it says, that holy life, that fruitful life. Not, you ain't never heard me get up here and just talk and talk about if they got this, if they got that. No. What I'm saying is if they got some fruits in their life and love, Love covers a multitude of sins. People don't walk. They got some selfish love. Most of them, they love themselves. Man, they take care of themselves. They love themselves. But they don't love God the right way. When we love God like that, we're going to put ourselves... Order your copy of this message from Pastor Gene Gibbons. Visit our website at www.pathwaytolife.net or give us a call at... 334-262-4569. Please give us the title of the sermon when ordering. It'll be a sacrifice and sometimes it'll be just as hard as it can be. And we're going through, and you know, people's got this falsehood in their head that if that person's really anointed and they pray like that, they don't go through as much as I do or they're not going through. Honey, they're going through more hell than you are to hold on to that anointing. Thank you for watching Pathway to Life. If you're in the Montgomery Metro or River Region area, we invite you to join us at Bethel Pathway Church. Our service times are Sundays at 11 o'clock a.m. and 6 o'clock p.m. Visit our website at www.pathwaytolife.net. Come, you will be blessed.